Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is June 20th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Barack Hussein Obama continues to protect Islam while attacking Christians. Meanwhile, the Justice Department releases an edited transcript of the 911 call from the radical Muslim terrorists during the Pulse nightclub attack. Then, anti-Trump protesters migrate to Phoenix, Arizona, armed with Mexican flags and a giant inflatable Trump sporting a KKK outfit. Plus, the candidate running against establishment puppet John McCain says the senator is directly responsible for the rise of ISIS. I know these people. I'm in contact with them all the time. Joe Biggs talks to Dr. Kelly Ward. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Night. The latest example of authoritarian censorship by the most transparent administration ever has been defeated. Now, this morning, the FBI and the Department of Justice released a partial transcript from the 911 call made by the Orlando nightclub shooter, Omar Mateen. And it's been our goal to get as much information into the public domain as possible so people can understand, as we do, possibly what motivated this killer, what led him to this place, and also provide us with information. Now, the attorney general said that this partial transcript was released to give people a sense of the motivation of the killer. But how are people supposed to know his motivation if you scrub all references to Islam and ISIS. This seems more in line with the Obama administration's uh, previous efforts to protect Islam. Following some backlash, the FBI and the DOJ reversed course, and they have now released the full transcript, which of course tells us what we already know. So what do you think? Was this a wise move by the Department of Justice to let any future jihadists know that they're not going to be receiving any accolades for committing atrocity? Or is this another Orwellian rewrite of history by the Ministry of Truth? The DOJ replaced Allah with God in the edited Orlando transcript. So this is very odd considering the fact that a veteran was forcibly kicked out of an Air Force ceremony for daring to mention the word God. School children are no longer allowed to recite one nation under God, yet it's okay to edit God into the equation in order to suggest that a terrorist uttered these words when he did no such thing. He said, Allah Akbar, not praise God. So obviously by erasing ties to Islamic extremism here, anyone in the future looking back on this atrocity can recall that this was more about the nation's gun problem or about a young man who was dealing with some of his uh, sexual identity issues or perhaps even the evils of Christianity but not Islamic terrorism. Even the New York Times came out last week making excuses for radical Islamists by saying, hold up Christians, the Bible calls for the execution of gays too. It doesn't. But why is there such a push to demonize Christianity when the only countries currently executing gays, it's state-sponsored execution or just throwing them off of roofs are nations under Islamic rule. And also considering the fact that ISIS has just released another video threatening an attack in Times Square, as well as U.S. bases around the world, I don't think the administration can continue to pretend that not uttering the words radical Islamic terrorism will somehow magically make it disappear. That's a great report there from Leanne McAdoo. Now, coming up later in our show, we'll have special reports from John Bounds and others. But first, to focus on this report that Leanne just gave us, that is a perfect example of why I don't just recite the press, press release. Because you guys understand that when you go out to these events, uh, whether it's a riot or you know anything that may be somewhat controversial, you have many initial reports, right? They'll send out the information that they have on hand at the time that information changes which is understandable. You get new sources, you get new information, uh, videos are released, and so on and so forth. But then comes the almighty press release. The press release that says that we didn't shoot tear gas at the journalists that were disassembling their equipment, and you're a conspiracy theorist if you say otherwise, and then I just happened to be there that day and had my own footage of it. And yes, they did help them disassemble their equipment, but that's after they shot tear gas and rubber bullets at them. <laughs> that's a very important detail that was omitted from the press release. And it's getting to the point now where I'm glad people caught this uh, with this DOJ transcript and how they were editing it, not just omitting certain information, but 
actually changing it to the point where they will change the world the words Allah to God and other things like removing out his references to the Islamic State. That is very pertinent information that completely or could completely change the motivation of a suspect in a crime. For example, let's say that uh, somebody in a liquor store got shot by somebody who walked in there you know, with a shotgun, whatever. Now, a lot of people may assume that this was a liquor store robbery gone bad, but let's say the guys had some personal information, they had a personal interaction, a history, and he got shot because he did the guy some wrong or he felt wronged by the gentleman. That completely changes the dynamic of the liquor store shooting. It wasn't just a robbery, it was some type of revenge scheme or other things like that. And that's the same thing we see with this uh, Orlando shooter. They want to remove certain aspects of it that really show his true motivations. Now, to an extent, I can understand why they want to do this. They don't want to give any credence to these uh, ISIS supporters, these people with this very extremist ideology that says you can go and you know someplace and kill people if you disagree with their points of view. I can understand that to an extent, but at the same time, I think you are really doing the people who died there a disservice if you don't show the person's true motivations for why he did the killing in the first place. Uh, you know, you can see all the reports out there. They say the guy is more than likely a, a closet homosexual, had his own views and things like that. He was going out to the club, not just to scout it out, but to participate in the activities. Also, he did say that he was doing this for ISIS, for the Islamic State. These are very pertinent points of view. And when you redact this, and only not only redact it, but just completely change the motivation, it's a huge disservice and doesn't really get anything done. So um, I'm very glad that the DOJ decided to reverse this decision. But once again, people had to hold them, hold their feet to the fire for this to happen. Had people just not paid attention to it and they went on and, you know, just talk about Cleveland winning the championship last night, you know, this could have got swept under the rug. And a year from now, people would be going back to the archives and like, hey, didn't he say that he did this for uh, Allah and he did this for the Islamic State? But, you know, luckily people happen to be paying attention to this on this day. Now, something else that people are paying attention to the situation that is going on in Oakland where the police chief has stepped down. They're running through police chiefs. And the situation with this is, is they had a number of officers involved with an underage prostitute, the, thus the allegations are. And they say that the third police chief to be replaced in the last nine days amid the sex scandal. And an 18 year old woman has alleged in multiple news media interviews that dozens of current and former officers in five cities had sex with her while she worked as a prostitute. And the kicker about this is she was a minor at the time. Now, in connection with this scandal, we've seen uh, multiple officers resign. Some have been put on paid leave and another committed suicide. So it's a very serious situation. And it seems like, at least on the surface, they seem pretty legit as far as getting to the bottom of it. Like I said, they're running through police chiefs. Uh, they have uh, sanctions on certain number of officers, but only time will tell if they can actually truly get down to the bottom of it because... You know, the blue, uh, what's it, the blue privilege they refer to sometimes. And there are many great officers out there, but sometimes they don't want that house of cards to fall because if uh, they take out this guy, then the next guy could fall, the next guy could fall, then they may get down to somebody else who maybe wasn't involved with the prostitution, but may have some other type of dirt on them that they don't want to get out into the public. And speaking of a guy who has a lot of dirt on him, this is El Chapo. Now, El Chapo is a very interesting case study, in my personal opinion, because you have a guy, Sinaloa Cartel, one of the most uh, famous cartels there is, really, even with him uh, currently incarcerated in Juarez, Mexico. But you have a situation with El Chapo. He goes to Juarez, Mexico with his faction, and they commit a massive gang war out there. The reports I saw, they said the highest rated death rate was uh, 2013, uh, excuse me, 2010, where they had 3,000 people murdered by the hands of uh, El Chapo, his foreign faction, or just in general. Now, like I said, not all those are contributed to the cartel, but many, 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 many of those are, and also in your gun-free zone. Also, not all of those were committed by firearms, but many of them were. And now we see that the wife of El Chapo is saying that he needs more humane conditions. And uh, I think this is very interesting for a guy who has committed such horrendous crimes, but they say a former beauty queen, which is his wife, and a U.S. citizen who lives in Mexico spent several days in Washington where she held a meeting with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, an arm of the Organization for American States. They say Mexican authorities citing security concerns have moved Guzman, that's El Chapo's real name, 
to a prison in Juarez, Mexico, near the border. Now, thus far, they're saying that his being there hasn't brought any, you know, real security concerns in that particular area. I understand he was moved from a different area, and he's awaiting transport here to the United States uh, pending his trial. But I don't know if you guys ever saw that movie, Sicario. Granted, it is a fictional movie, and I understand that, but many of the things portrayed in there where they were killing journalists, hanging them from the rafters, having shootouts in the street, that stuff really happens. Now, you can say it was glamorized, sensationalized for the movie, but once again, when you look back at 2010, you see that they murdered 3,000 people there in that city. I don't think they had to sensationalize it too much. And uh, quite honestly, I think the world's a little better off with El Chapo behind bars. But at the same time, you have to understand El Chapo is a guy who was being supported, funded, uh, armed by, among others, the United States government. We've seen the reports, uh, the CBS News report saying that when they went to his bunker, his lair, whatever it was, they found uh, rifles that he had received from Operation Fast and Furious, where they were running guns into Mexico with the notion that they were going to track these guns, uh, and when they find them at uh, you know crime scenes, they would arrest the bad guy who had them. I said, that makes absolutely no sense at all. So you're just going to let this guy run wild with the AK-47 or the AR-15 or whatever it is you're trying to demonize this week until you eventually catch up with them. And they said, yeah. Uh, Lanny Brewer stepped down. Eric Holder stepped down. Uh, thus far as I know, no big people went to jail over that scandal. Like the two I just mentioned there, they're able to walk away on their own terms. They wouldn't start a, a private practice with Brewer. I'm not sure what Holder is doing, but uh, he's not in jail. We know that uh, for a bare minimum. And as we're talking about firearms after Orlando, a lot of people want to jump on the gun control bandwagon, but a group that are rejecting this is the Special Forces. It says Special Forces Association rejects calls for gun control from Petraeus and McChrystal. For those of you who don't know, Petraeus and McChrystal said that we need to tighten down on gun control legislation. And the issue with this is the people in the Special Forces, they realize that the Second Amendment is not a restriction on the individual. The, the Bill of Rights in general are restrictions on the government. You as the private individual, I understand you have state and local laws that you have to abide by it, and you can fight those if you want to, but just in general, you have to abide by your state and local laws and, unless you live someplace like Vermont where they have complete constitutional carry. I believe it's Vermont. I'm going off the top of my head. So and that includes to uh, whether you carry your rifle or your pistol, you can carry it open or concealed, whatever else. But the people in Special Forces, they understand that you need to have the means to protect yourself because there's not always going to be somebody to protect you all the time. And let's say you do call the police and the police show up and they have the best of intentions, but you also have the situation, it was the Empire State shooting uh, a few uh, few years back, where the officers in the scene straight out of uh, Pulp Fiction, they pull out their guns, they open fire on the single assailant, if I'm remembering correctly, they hit nine other people that are not their intended target. I mean, it, and this is the type of police response you want, you're better off not calling the police. Because people have this notion that the cops are always a better shot than the civilians. If you go to some of these uh, shooting ranges and if you watch some of these uh, shooting events on TV, you can see just regular, normal, everyday civilians are incredible shots compared to a police officer. And also we see that the Supreme Court turns down the assault weapons case. Now, in particular, this is referring to New York and Connecticut where they have the SAFE Act. and bans things like uh, more than 10 rounds in your magazine. Now, there are other things being voted on. Uh, but as of this recording, they haven't been official yet, so we'll bring you that news a little bit later in the week. And moving quickly now to our last story, Senator John McCain is directly responsible for the rise of ISIS. And these are the words of Dr. Kelly Ward. She had a chance to uh, speak to Joe Biggs, and that's what she had to say. And I definitely think that John McCain should be held accountable. He's going over there. He's talking to these guys like, I know who these guys are. I have no issue with them. And meanwhile, he's giving them the weapons and all the things they need to succeed. So here's this video and we'll come back after this break with more special reports. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now we're inside the Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm joined by Kelly Ward. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here with all of these great Americans who want to make America great again. And I'm glad to see someone challenge Senator John McCain. That's really making me happy. So tell me a little bit about your platform and then about the remarks about how you believe he's kind of responsible for the rise of ISIS. Yes, well, you know, I'm running on a small government platform. Less taxes, less regulations, the strongest defense in the world, the strongest military, personal responsibility, and following the Constitution. I don't think you can go wrong with that kind of a platform. And yes, I took a punch at uh, John McCain. Now, he took a punch at the president, right? He, well, kind of, but he punched and then he ran backwards and said, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I misspoke. 
I will tell you that John McCain is directly responsible for the rise of ISIS. I'm not misspeaking. I'm telling you the truth. Um, his policies that he has had in place have allowed for a vacuum to be created in the Middle East that has been fill filled by a radical jihadi Islamic terror element. Now the thing that's most concerning for me here on our soil is that John McCain has also supported amnesty and open borders. And so we have left a pathway, a wide pathway open for those emboldened elements to come right into our country and affect our country, our soil, and our citizens. It's unacceptable. I mean, we have a commander in chief now that can't even say radical Islam. Yeah. And then he goes on the news and tells people not to use it. And that, in, in essence, giving them a free pass to continue what they're doing. You know, I was just in Orlando. I saw all that stuff out there. Ridiculous. And like you said, they're allowing the border to be wide open. What are you going to propose? What are you going to help to do to secure borders? Well, I'm ready to mix the mortar to fix the border. And, and so I'm here today because Donald Trump does want to secure the border. He does want to stop illegal immigration. He does want to prioritize Americans, American citizens, over people who come here illegally. He does want to stop stop people from coming into this country who want to do us harm. And I'm all for all of those things. I mean, we already have a border fence in Hereford, Arizona and those areas. I actually go up and down through the border quite a bit. And you know, these guys are very resilient. I mean, they, they use plas plasma cutters, cut parts of the fence, go through it and then go back and weld them. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. We need to secure it. If they're willing to do that much to get through, just imagine how easy it is in so many areas to get through. So we definitely need to secure it. I'm glad that we had a, able to talk, you know, a chance. And uh, I guess Donald Trump's about to go out. So have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now we're walking down the road, and as you can see, they have taken a blow up Donald Trump doll or a blow up Donald Trump balloon thing, put him in a KKK outfit. This is at 15th Avenue in Vernon. It says, Make America Hate Again, Trump. And then you got some dumbass over here that says, make America Mexico again. So why do you want to make America Mexico again? It's what? This is a statement that we're protesting the anti Mexican immigrant rhetoric. Yeah, How is it anti? Anti Mexican. Yeah, how? Well, he called us criminals and rapists. No, he said that the criminals were coming over, which is a fact. Is it? I mean, some have come over, yes. I mean, if it's not our fault if you take it the wrong way, if you think that you're a criminal, he said that some are coming over that are criminal. Well,. As a politician, you obviously don't stereotype a whole community of people, a whole demographic of people as a certain way. You should know that clearly affects the way those people are viewed and that affects those people personally. Okay, well I feel affected when the government comes out and says that I should be demonized because one guy went in with a gun and killed a whole bunch of people. So why should I be put into that category? Why should I be looked at as a bad person because I like guns? Are you? Does media do that to use a white male? Of course. Oh, I'm the white man thing. Oh, you are, aren't you? Yeah. Got good eyes. Thanks. So why are you guys out here today? Why are we out here? Because we don't support Donald Trump or his racist rhetoric, and we don't want that in our country. Have you ever talked to him before or met him? Or did you just watch that on MSNBC and hear that? Um, I've seen the way he speaks. I've seen his interviews. I think that reflects the way he thinks of, you know, his policy. So... So what do you think about his temporary ban on Muslims? Temporary ban on Muslims? I think it's very reminiscent of Hitler's um, policy towards Jews back in the day. How many Jews has Trump killed? Zero. So why is he compared to Hitler then? How many Jews did Hitler kill before that rhetoric? Yeah. But you're, 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 you're already demonizing him and he's done nothing. You don't want to be demonized for something you didn't do. You said you're not a criminal. Have I so why would you do that to him? Because I haven't personally attacked or gone after a certain group of people. So neither has he. Yes, I he believe has. that he has through his the policy. Ban on Muslims? Has it happened yet? Is that is that happening? He's proposing it. 
It's in his no. policy. Yeah, but that's the good thing about the U.S. government. They have to go through Congress and all that. Do you think those people are going to let it happen? I mean, let's be realistic here. So should we just waste our time while this goes filibustering but through what? Congress? If he comes How into would power, the face or? of America be if Donald Trump is proposing we have temporary bans on Congress? That's such a bad face, even if it would be stopped in Congress. Do you understand that? Like, oh, I understand what I'm saying, but it's just like Bernie Sanders is a socialist. Like, if he were to, it's, it, it, it's whatever you want to call it. Just but like it, regardless, but that's ignorance. No, you don't know what you're just comparing it to socialism, but democratic socialism is, is different. It's been done in this country, and it worked. Yeah. It pulled us out of the repression while FDR was a president. Okay. So are you here today? I'm here because um, well, we want to send a message to Trump that his ideas do not reflect a lot of ours in Phoenix. So do you support violence outside Trump rallies, spitting on other protesters because you have a different point of view than them? Absolutely not. And we are not. We want to keep this peaceful. We've seen different rallies, such as those where um, they're blocking highways, and we are not standing for that today. We want to send a peaceful message, like her says, that love Trump's hate. All right. And I appreciate it. That's awesome. That's the worst thing you can possibly do is when I hear when I hear people come out and protest. I don't care if people protest. What I don't like is when someone goes to a protest and they spit on people and throw eggs at them like they did in San Jose. Yeah, we are trying. So cool. Well, thank you. Keep it that way. That's awesome. Thanks. Have a good one, guys. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now we're at the anti-Trump rally right down the road for where Donald Trump will be speaking later on this afternoon. What's your name, sir? Renee. Renee. And uh, why are you here today? I'm just here to give my support to this community, you know, giving back, showing that, you know, that we're not going to let ourselves get taken over by somebody that doesn't, has so much hate against us and that it's always looking to blame somebody instead of themselves and showing other ways to to show how to care about people. So do you live here in this in, in America? Yes, I do. So why not have the American flag? Because my parents were also here illegally and you know, I'm supporting them. They brought me they brought us, you know, came from Mexico to give a better life. But I mean, they left for a reason because it's bad, right? Yes, they did. And but my thing is, and that's why it looks bad for a lot of demonstrators when you, I go to all these rallies, when people wave Mexican flags and not the American flag. If if Mexico was good, then people would stay. But people come here because it's a better life for their family, you know. So don't you think your message would get a, by a lot better if you actually had the American flag to show that? You are with America, but you have Mexican roots, you know? I'm more Mexican than America. I'm more Mexican because... So is your allegiance to Mexico or to America? Both. Because I have both nationalities. I have Mexican nationality and Mexican nationality. Because, I mean, I have a lot of buddies that came from Mexico, joined the U.S. Army, fought in combat. So they have both nationalities. Yeah, but they, they got their American citizenship, and they would never be caught dead they only would have an American flag but this for example at soccer games at events how can we don't do the national anthem how can we do just do the countries that they're uh, that whoever they're playing how can we don't do the national anthem afterward all three you know teams have done it why I'm asking you oh I don't watch sports so I don't know then there we go so because because I don't believe in sports. I think there's more important things uh, to care about in the world. Like, if people are more concerned about racism, turn off the soccer game, turn off the football games, turn off the basketball games, and actually get out on the streets and do something about it in a peaceful way and bring attention to it instead of glorifying people that are, really don't care about you. I just, like I said, I just, just my way of showing, you know, people that are here illegally that can't come out here as well. Maybe showing the Mexican flag means that makes them want to, you know what, at least there's somebody out there that's speaking for us, that we're under the shadows, that they can't talk for us, you know, because they're afraid of coming out here and getting harassed or arrested or whatever because... Who are they going to be harassed by? Just by any, any, anybody, just because they don't know how to defend themselves in, you know, talking in English and they only know in Spanish. So do you support this kind of rally or do you support the violent rallies that you see outside? No, just peaceable. Yeah. I think it's better because that's what we're here to do. We're not here to do go do violence and stuff like that because if we do violence, then, you know, the world will be full of violence. Well, like what we saw in San Jose, California, Albuquerque, all those different places, you know. When someone wants to go see a presidential candidate, regardless if you agree with them or not, Americans have the right to go see that person speak, you know. Do you agree? Correct, I do. And, I mean, I mean 
my thing is is you know i get upset when i when i witness this stuff when people go out to these rallies and they're being spit on cursed at called racist because they want to go see this guy talk a lot of them aren't even for him they're just curious to see what he has to say they've never seen him in person but they get spit on demonized and I, that looks bad when i see protesting like that you know they, don't they cause it to themselves they wear donald trump shirts and they're just gonna go up. Yeah, but that's freedom of speech exactly like you, you can wear stop hate trump or I saw a guy in Dallas yesterday that had to shoot Trump. You know, that's his freedom of speech, but you're inciting violence. Yeah, but you're, you're, are you going to go see him for the first time and wear a Donald Trump shirt, or are you going to go just as a civilian just to hear what he Well, has? I didn't say every single person in there was their first time, but I mean... No, I'm just talking about in general. Okay, but I see Bernie Sanders people go to rallies with Bernie shirts on. Why are they not? He's a socialist. Look at what's happened in Venezuela. Yeah, it was going... <laughs> True, but I mean, what what can you do? At least, at least we're not here to cause. I mean, yeah, I know. But my thing is, though, is if we're gonna have freedom of speech in America, everyone should have the right to wear a Donald Trump shirt, whatever. You have the right to have a Mexican flag on, you know. But at the same time, it should be your allegiance. What always should be with America, because that's where you live. That's where you're able to have a job. Where if you have kids, to raise them up. Like I told you, I did it because there's a bunch of people out there that can't come to these rallies because they're afraid to live under the shadow. Scared Dora Pyle just by even going down the street to go get groceries. Why not support them? Why not have them in our back? If we can do it, you know, and have a voice because we're citizens here, why not support the people that are living under the shadows? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Why would you support a racist? He's going to send you back to Africa. That's what he said. He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. You, you are just, you are a disgrace to America. Thank you. For being a young black man Thank supporting you. a racist. Thank you. Donald Trump, what's it say? I think he's a racist. Come on, tell us why you think Trump's a racist. We want to talk about the details, man. Yeah. What about the facts? How come, how come you guys can only say he's a racist, but y'all can't talk about the facts? Why is that? His opponents uh, say that this is more proof that he's racist. And, you know, people say, is this racism? Because it sounds to me like you want to bring back the one drop rule. Yeah. No, he said that the criminals were coming over, which is a fact. Is it? I mean, some have come over, yes. So why should I be put into that category? Why should I be looked at as a bad person because I like guns? Are you, does media do that to use a white male? Of course. Oh, I'm the white man thing. Oh, you are, aren't you? Yeah. Got good eyes. Does anyone on the left actually care about racism? Or is it just being used as a Solinsky-esque tool to polarize the sheep into bleeding what they have been told is true? Because according to Dolly Kyle, the former high school girlfriend of Bill Clinton, Bill and Hillary Clinton regularly used racial epithets and looked down on poor people. Kyle makes the accusation in her book, Hillary, The Other Woman. In addition to calling mentally disabled children at a governor's mansion Easter egg hunt effing retards, Kyle says Hillary referred to the people of Arkansas as ignorant hillbillies. Hillary also allegedly used derogatory terms for Jews, including effing Jew bastard. Bill, Kyle insists, called the Reverend Jesse Jackson a GD N-word. Latinos were similarly slandered and profiled. Kyle continues, For no good reason, Bill and Hillary decided to profile Hispanics as drug dealers. Specifically, Arkansas troopers were to stop and search cars driven by Hispanics, especially those cars with Texas license plates. Clinton's criminal apprehension program was ruled unconstitutional. Kyle continues, Billy threw one of his infamous temper tantrums about the ban on his racial profiling of Hispanics, and he threatened to renew the racial profiling program in spite of the court's ruling. The Daily Beast notes, Clinton's Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act of 1994, authored by then-Senator Joe Biden, was supported by virtually every Democrat in Congress, including then-Representative Bernie Sanders. That legislation led to the mass incarceration of black Americans. Legal scholar Michelle Alexander notes, Bill Clinton presided over the largest increase in federal and state prison inmates of any president in American history. Alexander accused the Clintons of decimating black America and said Hillary does not deserve the black vote. In response to pressure by Black Lives Matter, Hillary apologized for her role in pushing for the bill. 
Despite Hillary's alleged racism, a large number of blacks, especially in the South, turned out to vote for Clinton during the primaries. The Huffington Post notes, both Clinton and her husband, former President Bill Clinton, have traditionally had solid support from blacks, a key component of the Democratic electorate. In May, a Fox News poll revealed 62% of Latino voters favored Clinton over rival Donald Trump. Evelyn Perez Badia, analyst with Political Passion, told Fox News Latino there's a more hospitable tone that Hillary Clinton is taking in terms of communicating with Hispanics. Compared to Donald Trump, it's a much different message, simply because it's a fabrication. Snap out of it, fake liberals. The giant boulder of truth just crushed those little plastic lies painstakingly set up to misinform in the name of George Soros and his New World Order stooges. There's a real good reason why Hillary Clinton respected former Senator Robert Byrd, Byrd, also known as an exalted cyclops of the Ku Klux Klan. John Bound for Infowars.com. Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com at the back of the Toschenberg uh, Palais Hotel. There's a ambulance, I guess, waiting for if Henry Kissinger has a fall or something or drowns in his tub. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, we've got Alex from Infokrieg, a longtime listener. Infokrieg means Infowars in German, and uh, he's got Infokrieg.com and Infokrieg.de as well. Um, it's uh, Infokrieg.tv, it's Recenter.com, and um, you can find us on the web pretty easily. All right, so one of the things they're talking about in here is this new precariat class, which is, I guess, one step away from uh, absolute um, uh, peasantry or something, absolute serfdom. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, according to recent numbers, 17% uh, of all European uh, working age people, 17% are without a job. And of course, you know, the American numbers, 100 million Americans without a job. So. There used to be a lot of talk about the proletariat, the working class, not making much money, but at least having a stable job or a stable work environment. But of course, these guys, they moved a lot of the production overseas, while some of these insider companies, they did not have to move overseas because it's oil business and banking stuff that stayed here. So um, obviously, a lot of jobs are gone and they're talking about this new low class and what to do with them, because at some point, they might get smart, they might get organized or whatever. So um, their idea is the basic unconditional income. The Sw uh, Swiss people just voted it down. It was a big vote uh, a few days ago. And it was about revamping, completely changing the social security or uh, social system. Yeah, so giving each person like 2,000, 2,500 Swiss francs a month, is that what you're talking about? Well, it's 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 different in each, in each country when it's proposed, but I think it was uh, uh, yeah, that high in, in Switzerland. But of course, living costs is higher in Switzerland. Other countries have said it would be more like 800 euros, and it could be 800 euros to 1,000 euros in Germany. So instead of having all these different payouts, these different payments, you get one payment for everyone. So that way they can prolong the secure social, uh, social uh, welfare system because it gets cheaper. You don't have to hunt every dollar. You don't have to hunt every euro. You just have a fixed amount of money paid to every person each month. So you can pay the rent, you can pay, pay your Netflix, everything. So that, that's for one thing is to keep the, the new low class, the, the precariat happy with that. You get food, you get, you get your, your rent paid. And so the precariat will defend the new order. And also we've seen um, uh, companies announcing they're going to return to Europe and return to America with their production like Nike or uh, Adidas. They've announced they bring the production back home, but it's going to be robot factories. So not a lot of jobs here. So more people in the precariat, more people to keep happy, more pe uh, people to keep into the system. They're going to defend because imagine taking so going to someone and saying, you know, we need to change this. You know, you, you shouldn't be getting this free money each month. But it's going to be cool at first for some people, but it's going to be conditional. They announce it as unconditional, but it's going to be conditional. At some point, you know, you, you can't speak out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, obviously, you're going to have to work at some in some capacity. And, and before you know it, you're going to have a system that was like here in East Germany. You're going to be a minder. Yes. Walk around and follow people around and report on them to the government. 
uh, in this place in eastern germany it was illegal not to work so if they had if they if the government could provide 10 jobs they would stick 15 to 20 people to do the work of, of 10 people just so that everybody had to report to work and go to work even if they were making stuff that nobody really needed or it was low quality but it, it was it was a requirement for you to work you were going to prison if you didn't work and so um, they're bringing this back and it's interesting enough that um, a company that is represented here every year Siemens uh, they sold computers to the Eastern Bloc especially the Stasi the Stasi was using a Siemens computer up until 87 for the most intimate database of agents and what they provided and so it's it's pretty interesting to see that these companies they were um, they were creating the system as we know it and so here you have like the the, the western the western left kind of the the Fabian society created left and that was a, a ploy basically to to protect against uh, the eastern infiltration because the eastern bloc was closed and it's today it's closing again so the West is an open society. So the Western globalists, they were thinking, if we support communism in the East through these companies like IBM, Fiat, all these companies that are at Bilderberg, we, we build up communism in, in the East. We have to protect against it in the West. And so they created their own leftist groups that sounded like the, the Eastern groups, but they were run by the Fabian society. And so a lot of people, they didn't even know what they were following because they sounded all the same. Black and are racist. That's sad. That's real sad. He's against you. Why will you why will you support a racist? He's gonna send you back to Africa. That's what he said. He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. You you are you should, you are a disgrace to America. For being a young black man supporting a racist. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. That's sad. Awesome. How does your parents feel about you holding a Trump sign? Where they disgrace to America too, because he doesn't like you or your All parents. My friends, you didn't I answer my question. Yeah, you didn't answer my question. Why has he said? He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. No, he said. He said don't, don't let Muslims here. Yeah, he said. Why? He's, are you going to let me talk or are you going to yell? No, I'm telling you because oh, you're oh, yeah, holding you're this Trump sign and you well, need we to be taught. We can't conversation, can we? We cannot do that, right? And then oh, okay, okay. Also, Okay. Telling you well, against tell your she, own people. She just graduated high school, so she's not a kid no more. Okay. I, I what would you tell him when a racist tell send Mexican back to Mexico? What would you tell a young black not, man? I only believe that he's gonna send illegals back. I yeah, exactly. He said in your face he send Mexican back to Mexico. He said illegals. Just illegals. Just illegals. illegals only. And Please. He's, he's his not wife legal. is not he's legal. legal. She's from Europe. She's legal. legal. How she? Well, she was born she has, in Europe. Has, okay, why would she have a U.S. citizenship? Running for president. So she has U.S. citizenship. So that that's just because she was born in another country does not mean she has a legal citizenship. That's fine. You don't have to. Born in Europe, that makes her illegal. This guy has a very small grasp of reality, and I would say he's the one who uh, who is a racist. He's wearing a Black Lives Matter T-shirt and uh, obviously rejecting all lives matter. So there's the video right now. It's got a, over a million views on our YouTube channel. Probably, I think on our Facebook post, other people grabbed it on Facebook, and it's got millions of views on Facebook. Just a young man. His name is Quaterius Manuel. So do you see how it works just by standing up and just standing there and letting the opposition talk themselves into a hole? You could really make these people look like fools. Yeah, that's right. And so had, had, had you been sparring with this guy verbally before or did this just all happen spontaneously? So um, I woke up, obviously, you know, the night before I learned out that Trump was coming to Atlanta. So I decided I wanted to come to go see Trump because he's my candidate, as you can see. And so I went in line with my friend Brett and I and Callie and Mallory. So we were sitting there, and then the guy came to us. He approached us, and he just started attacking us verbally. And then we 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 tried our best to inform him on on issues, and he obviously did not know. He called the KKK the KK. He didn't know what legal immigration was. It was just insane. So, yeah. Was, yeah, I, mean, I think the funniest was thing was that he wants to ship guy. black people back to Africa. That, to me, was one of the funniest statements I've ever heard from a grown man. Uh, and he's not calling shipping anybody back. He's just saying people who've broken the law, illegal immigrants. He's saying, hey, 
we have to have a system. We have to ship these people back. He goes, we may even allow them to come back in, but we have to clean, kind of clean the slate before we can deal with what's going on in this country. And right now, it's crazy. The border's wide open, the southern border. They're saying there's more illegals pouring over the border now, uh, this year already, than all of last year. And last year was a record year. Yeah. Um, like I said, like, I mean, these liberals, they just want, they just want free stuff and, 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 and Trump is not buying it. He's not buying it. We're not going to continue to let our country come. We're not going to continue to let our country go, the, go to the ground when Trump is our president because he's going to stop illegal immigration. And people don't want to hear that because they know when, when he gets in office, is America going to be great again, great again. And the liberal media does not want America to be great based off conservative values. They want America to be great based off liberal values. And that's just, and that's just it. And I would agree. I, and I'll lump the Republicans in there with the Democrats who, who like illegal immigration because the Democrats like it because it creates a big voting base. And the Republicans like it is because it creates a form of cheap labor that they can exploit. And I, I say shame on both these groups, shame on exploiting people, because it, in addition to just bringing people in as, as uh, cheap labor, you're all, you're, how many people are dying just to make that journey because they think there's a glimmer of hope that they can get in? How, how much of the drug trade is fueled by this, the coyote trade? I mean, we're keeping really bad people in power and in money, uh, well-financed, just by allowing this system to continue. Exactly the rate. I mean, look at all these illegal Mexicans. They come in here, and and I I was um I don't know if you know anything about Georgia, but I was in Dunwoody, and then I saw I was out there playing soccer with my friend, and then we noticed some um, Hispanics come up to us. I'm not, I'm just doing what I'm just profiling, you know, based off what information I was given using my context clues, something I was taught to do in third grade. But um, so I I used them, I asked them, and they were. They, first of all, they didn't know any English. And I was like, well, how old are you? He's like, I'm 15. So, like, okay, what school do you go to? You know, I'm, I'm 16. I want to know what school you go to. So like, we're not going to school yet. We're just working. I was like, so how did you get here? He's like, I got here two weeks ago. It's like, how? He was like, he was like, he just he didn't get, couldn't give me answers because he didn't learn English. So I just assumed he was illegal. I was like, where are you from? He was like, well, my cousin's from Mexico. I'm from Guatemala. And I said, well, well why are you here? He was like, you know, we, we come here because we it's better opportunity. I said, well, are you legal? Do you have ID, a citizenship or anything? He was like, no. And then that's when some more started coming towards me. And, you know, basically, I think it was one guy, you know, a little English. And he asked, he was like, why are you confronting my friend? I was like, because he's illegal. And I don't, and I don't agree with legal immigration. So long story, long story short, we ended up reporting, got to the police offices, and the police um, got the guy in custody. I don't know anything about him now, but yeah, I mean, it just shows you how how much they come over. They're they're making their way to Georgia now. So there was a report last week of a, an eighteen wheeler driver who just stopped in the middle of at a rest stop, and uh, it was on his way, I think, to um, some some other city. He was, he was coming from El Paso. He stopped in the middle let out a whole truckload of illegals and they were just wandering around the truck stop. They didn't even know where they were. I mean, th this is not right on so many levels. So people who sit there and say illegal immigration is good, it's not doing anything. It's not helping any side of the equation. And it's also driving down our, our, our wages if people want to look at it that way. But what, uh, Kwe, what got you into Trump in the first place? What, what really attracted you to him? So originally I was, I've been always Republican. Um, I grew up in a conservative home, obviously in Georgia, suburbs of Georgia. Um, I did not like Trump at first. I'm out of dislike him. He was my second option. My number one option was Ted Cruz because I thought Ted Cruz has conservative principles that I was for as far as like free market, stuff like that. That's true conservative on the economic side. You know what I mean? So, and I thought he had this, this great Christian belief because I am a individual Christian. I love Christianity. That's just my religion. And I thought Ted Cruz was the closest guy to Reagan. That's what I thought. And then I thought Ted Cruz spoke to the people. I thought he was more than just a politician because he was the outsider. I mean, like, I don't know if you knew, but everybody knew that Ted Cruz was not liked in Washington because they didn't like his ideals. And so I thought he was the guy that I needed to take on Washington with his conservative values. Values, And then and then once he dropped out, when he lost Indiana primary, I was devastated. You know, I was like, oh, my God. It, it, and then also what made me influence my decision, if you saw the latest polls of CNN and Fox were coming out, Ted Cruz was beating Hillary by over like 11 points. And Donald Trump was losing to Hillary by like 16. So I was like, 
well, where is Donald Trump path to 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 winning um, the presidency? So I thought about that too when I was picking my candidate at first. And anyway, so Ted Cruz, I had Ted Cruz, and he dropped out. I was a little lost. So I took a two week break from politics, and then I started researching into Donald Trump. And I started researching into why liberal media portrays Donald Trump this way when he's really not. I mean, he has some of the biggest black supporters. You have Herman Cain. I mean, you can just go on and on, but that's just one big guy. And and I looked into it, I was like, he's not this person. So why are the media doing that? And I thought Donald Trump had a chip on his shoulder. And I thought, I'm going to support this guy because, for one, he's a GOP nominee, so I'm going to support the nominee. I'm not like, I have so much respect for the Bush family, but I don't understand why they would not support the GOP nominee when it goes against Hillary. And I'm that guy that's like anyone but Hillary. And then I like, I fell in love with his policy, you know, like immigration, education, getting rid of Common Core, et cetera. So... Yeah, and he's got a pretty favorable uh, economic plan. Uh, a lot of people have looked at it and said, this is the this plan is going to put money back in everybody's pocket, his uh, tax program. He's also come out and said he wants to save Social Security and Medicare, which I think is a an issue on both sides. People want to see how it can be saved. Obamacare is the worst thing that could ever happen to America, and he is going to repeal that. Yeah. So. And that's it for our show tonight. We do encourage you to go to prisonplanet.tv and to get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.